I want to start off by saying all praises to Yahweh, Haba Hashem, Yahweh Shah, Baha Hashem, Kadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders, a great millstone. They will well. I want to say shalom on to the brothers out there preaching and teaching the truth worldwide. And shalom on to the hopeful lit. Today's lesson is going to be entitled uh, Pestilence Come from Yahweh. <clears throat> So um, I got some scriptures lined up going to, I'm going to bring an account uh, back when uh, uh, Yahweh sent uh, pestilence um, based on uh, what King David, when he actually numbered, uh, you know, numbered the Israelites. <clears throat> uh, ultimately, uh, if you read the whole story, um which was in second, oh, yeah, second Samuel. You know, you can get, you know, kind of read the whole story, basically what happened. The reason why um, the Lord sent that pestilence was based upon um, what King David, you know, he had a number of people. <clears throat> so you want to, you know, learn a little bit more about it. You know, so you can read the whole account of basically what happened, which I'm going to read uh, a little bit of that and then pull, pull some other precepts. To go along with that, but before that, <clears throat> I'm gonna play a little bit of this clip. Um, I'm going to a couple of different articles. This one is entitled Italy's Italy's uh, uh, coronavirus uh, coronavirus outbreak is the biggest outside of Asia, and I'm gonna play a little bit of this um, article right here. Well, video. As soon as it gets, you know, started to play. You are walking through one of several Wuhan field hospitals. This one, a converted exhibition hall. It is aimed to contain the spread of the novel coronavirus. Notice bed after bed after bed. People crammed in, just feet apart from one another. Portable toilets, a bit messy inside, and trash cans overflowing. You can see the piles of used face masks. The woman who toured CNN via video chat through this field hospital tells us the conditions here worry her. Fearing repercussions, she asked we call her Lisa Wong, not her real name. There's a great danger of cross-infection, and there are people who are healthy and got taken here by mistake. Chinese state media aired images of the same field hospital before it opened, much cleaner inside. Wang says she and others here are recovered and healthy, and were still forced into the facility. I'm very angry because I feel I shouldn't have come here. I'm very anxious. I want to be back home soon. Wong contracted the virus in late January, but fully recovered within a couple of weeks. Both her CT scan and swab test results show that she twice tested negative. But officials still bust Wong and several others to the field hospital for further treatment, despite her negative test results. They told me if I refused, they would force me to go. Bo Hanlin faced a similar rounding up in Wuhan. His wife was a confirmed case, so he was listed as a close contact person. But his first two tests came back negative. The neighborhood committee tried to hospitalize him nonetheless. I felt quite angry about this because there are so many people who have not been hospitalized at the moment. Why would they quarantine the health of people? CNN reached out to the Wuhan Health Commission to better understand how the field hospitals are being used and to ask... All right, that's enough of that video. Ultimately, <clears throat> that's the will of the Heavenly Father, the reason why uh, you're taken into the concentration camp. <clears throat> so, Italy's... Uh, <clears throat> is this going into coronavirus outbreak? Is the biggest outside of Asia? What we're covering here, death toll rises, the number of... The number of deaths from the novel coronavirus has risen to 2465 worldwide. There are over 79,930 cases globally and 20 deaths outside mainland China. South China spike cases in the East Asian country have surged past 600, where half the total cases are associated with a branch of a religious group in the south of the country. 
tell you on what biggest outbreak outside um, Asia. The total confirmed cases in Italy has risen from three to 132 over the weekend, a spike that is attributed to its rise in, inf in infections in the country's north. <clears throat> Middle East spread, Iran, Iran's health ministry has confirmed, confirmed 43 cases of the virus, including eight deaths. Lebanon and Israel have reported their first cases. <clears throat> Taiwan confirms two more cases of coronavirus. All right, so. Turkey, Afghanistan to shut borders with Iran over uh, coronavirus outbreak. <clears throat> and I got another article kind of bringing it back to mainland here in Babylon the Great. This just came in. Today is, what, September, what, 23rd? Yeah, prophecy. So White House expected to ask Congress for coronavirus funds this week. <clears throat> this article came out today, Sunday, February 23rd, 2020. Your prophecy. <clears throat> White House officials are expected to ask Congress for emergency funding this week to battle, to battle the coronavirus amid growing fears of a larger outbreak in the U.S. Two officials familiar what the forthcoming request said. Government aides worked throughout the weekend on the supplemental request, which is still but not final, but could be sent to Capitol Hill as soon as Monday, according to a, uh, it's like, according to a person familiar with the plans. The source, that source said Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar has ruffled feathers through the process by requesting amounts of money that have been seen as largely out of proportion. The source noted HHS already has money that could be used for corona, coronavirus issues, but claim Azar has been pushing hard for this to overcompensate for management decisions regarding uh, coronavirus containment that the source that the source criticized. So ultimately, you know, Esau Edom <clears throat> they're trying to get, you know, get funds so that they could, you know, quote unquote, try to fight uh this this particular virus. Ultimately at the end of the day, <clears throat> it's gonna be the will of the heaven follow. Um what's gonna be done in reference to uh this uh coronavirus. So the first precept I'm gonna get <clears throat> is I'm gonna go to <clears throat> the book of Isaiah. <clears throat> Isaiah thirty one and one. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help. So yeah, for for uh <clears throat> for you Israelites that's going down going down to Esau for help, uh, going down and taking his vaccinations or, or whatever whatever help that Esau is trying to provide. Scripture said, woe to them that go down to Egypt for help and stay on horses and trust and cherish because they are, they are many and in horsemen because they are very strong, but they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek Yahweh because <clears throat> our people aren't seeking the heavenly Father. They going down to Egypt, America, Babylon, and Great for help instead of instead of seeking and trusting in the Holy One of Israel. <clears throat> Ultimately, when um, the Lord sets this pestilence on different uh, destructions that He has set forth for America, Babylon, and Great, you won't be defended at that point of time because you trusted in this wicked um, system that that you know this devil has set forth. So as the scripture said, woe to them. Woe means destruction. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help. Because you're going down to Esau, a.k.a. the white man, which he wants to be called in this current system. Since you want to go down to him for, for help and not seeking the Holy One of Israel, you won't be defended at that point in time. <clears throat> so I'm going to bring up this account. 
it's kind of going to uh, ultimately it's the heavenly father that sends these pestilence. And I'm going to get an account of when he sent the pestilence on the nation of Israel. And this is in the second second Samuel 24. And I'm going to start at the 13th verse. If you want to read the whole account, which is something, you know, it's a good. Everything is good to read in the, in the Bible. But if you want to read this, get the whole totality of what happened, just start up at the first verse. So I'm jumping down. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm going to hit the... Uh, I'm going to start at the first verse. <clears throat> I'm going to go to, uh, I got 2 Samuel 24 and 1. And again, the anger of Yahweh was kindled against Israel. And he moved David against them to say, go, number Israel and Judah. So the Lord is mad. He he uh, <clears throat> he moved King David to, to number the people. So I'm going to jump down. So that's. The beginning part. So I'm going to go down to verse 13. <clears throat> so Gad came to David and told him and said unto him, Shall seven years of famine come unto thee in thy land? Or wilt thou flee three months before thine enemies while they pursue thee? Or that there be three days pestilence in thy land? Now advise and see what answer I shall return to him that sent me. <clears throat> Verse 14. And David said unto Gad, I am in great strait. Let us fall now into the hand of Yahweh, for his mercies are great. And let me not fall into the hand of man. <clears throat> Verse 15. So Yahweh sent a pestilence upon Israel. From the morning eve to the time appointed, and there died of the people from Dan even to Beersheba, 70,000 men. That's a lot of people. And verse 16, and when the angel stretched out his hand upon Jerusalem to destroy it, <clears throat> Yahweh repented him of the evil and said to the angel that destroyed the people, it is enough. Stay now thy hand. And the angel of Yahweh was by the threshing place of uh, Arana, uh, Arana, the Jebusite. <clears throat> so as you see in this this, this particular uh, uh, story, what's going on, the Lord sent a pestilence and destroyed 70,000 people. <clears throat> with this particular pestilence because as he heard in verse 1 um, ultimately the, the heavenly father he you know <clears throat> he wasn't pleased at what's going on because it said and, the, and again the anger of Yahweh was kindled against Israel and he moved David against them to say go number Israel and Judah <clears throat> And after King David numbered the people, the Lord sent a pestilence. Because ultimately, the Lord and what would count his people, which if you, you know, can kind of put, you know, one and one together and get two, the Lord ain't with no senses. For, so for our people that's going out there voting or consenting to those different senses, the Lord ain't with count, count his people. So for our people that's going out there voting and, and, and registering in the different senses, as you can see, the Lord ain't with count his people. So if any Israelite, Israelite out there voting or or consenting to um, the different census, this is what, 2020, I think it's every 10 years, they do a census. Why are you up there, you know, counting up your household? Because evidently, the Lord ain't with that. We just seen it. The Lord, and again, the anger of Yahweh was kindled against Israel, and he moved David against them to say so uh, so like move david against them to say go number israel and judah and what happened after king david numbered the people the lord sent a pestilence. <clears throat> all right so the next uh um, scripture i'm gonna get dealing with pestilence is i'm gonna go in the book of jeremiah <clears throat>
Got the book of Jeremiah, chapter 14. <clears throat> All right, the book of Jeremiah, chapter 14, verse 12. When they fast, I will not hear their cry. And when they offer burnt offering and an oblation, I will not accept them, but I will consume them by the sword and by the famine and by the pestilence. <clears throat> so that's what happened to our people when they didn't want to listen to um, Jeremiah when he was telling them what they need to do. And I think I have that particular um, scripture pulled up because our people didn't want to um, I think it's in okay, Jeremiah 21. Thank you, Jeremiah 21, verse 9. Okay, so <clears throat> Jeremiah 21, verse 9. He that abided in this city shall die by the sword and by the famine and by the pestilence. But he that goeth, but he that goeth out and follow to the Chaldees, Chaldees that besiege you, he shall live and he and his life shall be upon him for a prey. So because <clears throat> our people didn't want to listen to Jeremiah when he told them, hey, check this out. If you just, you know, if you just go out and, and follow to the Chaldeans that besiege you, you shall live. So the heavenly father ultimately gives us an out. <clears throat> but Jake is so hard headed. He don't want to take that out. You know what I'm saying? He didn't want to go out and, and, and fall fall down, you know, succumb to the Chaldeans. Jake ultimately wants to be hard-headed. <clears throat> and so what has to happen? The Lord sent that pestilence upon you. And, and the out right now that the heaven Father is giving us is this truth. See, but since Jake doesn't want to just fall down and serve the heavenly Father, what's going to happen? The Lord is going to send that pestilence again. By way, the ultimate person is going to be that nuclear destruction. And <laughs> when it walk up, as it says in Psalm 91, a thousand going to fall at, as a matter of fact. Let's go get that. I'm not going to quote it. Psalms 91. Psalms 91. All right. No, let's just say Psalms 91 and 6. No. no. All right. Psalms 91. I'm going to start at 6. Nor the pestilence that walketh in the darkness, nor the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come. 9D. So ultimately, you're going to see people down on your left and right, and it's not going to come near you. <clears throat> and the ultimate person, as I, as I stated before, is that nuclear destruction <clears throat> that's, you know, set to befall America, aka Babylon the Great. <clears throat> so hopefully, um, this lesson that I brought up about the pestilence, they come from your hour. Hopefully, this lesson was edifying, and until next time, shalom.